The Hermetic Marriage, or the Marriage of the Sun and the Moon, the origin of the Hermetic philosophy, will astound you. You're going to learn a few things about yourselves, about religion, and about Walt Disney tonight. Good old Walt. You've been leading your children to his lessons and the mysteries and the philosophic indoctrination into the philosophy of fire for many years, and you didn't even know it. Thoth Hermes, the ibis headed, was the Egyptian god of wisdom, learning, literature, and science. Gnosis, if you will. The G in the center of the compass and square of the Masonic emblem does not stand for God or geometry. It means Gnosis, knowledge, those who know. Thoth Hermes is accredited with being the first to reveal the art of writing to the present human race. According to the records available, he lived in Egypt as a contemporary of Moses. Some authorities even claim that Moses and Hermes were one and the same person. The Greek name Hermes is taken from an ancient root, Herm, which means the active or positive, radiant principle of nature, sometimes translated as vitality or generative force and known to ancient Freemasonry, or the Sons of Light, the Freemasons, as the Cosmic Fire. Hiram, and later as Hiram Abith. Hermes Trismegistus, often called Mercurius Ter Maximus, dominated the philosophical and literary thought of the ancient world. His very name, ladies and gentlemen, became a synonym of wisdom. In fact, he was revered as the personification of philosophy and erudition. He was regarded as the first Kabbalist, the first physician, the first alchemist, and the first historian. The actual life of this demagogue and king of the ancient double empire of the Nile is obscured by that twilight which hides the origin of all peoples and those who think they know you can be assured do not by reason of his great wisdom and magical powers Thoth was listed among the gods until today, many believe that he never existed at all outside of mythology. But if action and reaction are equal, then something more substantial than a mere legend must be the foundation for the towering superstructure of the hermetic arts. During the early periods of human growth, when the intelligence of man was scarcely above that of the animal, according to the theory of evolution, all education was controlled by the priest craft, just as I have outlined to you on many episodes of the Hour of the Time. The ancient priests were called the shepherds of men. The analogy is that men are sheep or cattle. For the shepherds guarded the flocks of primitive human beings as the shepherd does his sheep. Are you beginning to have a flicker of understanding. Both science and philosophy were outgrowths of religion. In fact, all our present-day wisdom came originally into the world from between the pillars of the sanctuaries, the temples, what today you call cathedrals or churches. And it came from the priesthood, from the priests, Hermes was to ancient philosophy what Jesus is to Christianity, its light, its inspiration, and, of course, its impetus. The Egyptian initiates of the Temple of Isis claimed, therefore, that Hermes was actually the writer of all books on philosophical and religious subjects. 
that the supposed human authors were merely Emmanuelans who wrote down upon parchment or vellum the thoughts which this God impressed upon their consciousness, sort of like channeling. In scriptural terms, they were the pens, and he the ever-ready writer. During his lifetime, if indeed he lived, Hermes Trismegistus is supposed to have actually written 42 books. Some, however, are probably the work of the ancient Egyptian priests, for in their glory, these serpent-crowned hierophants represented the wisest group of philosophers that ever lived upon this planet. Clemens Alexandrinus states that these hermetic books were divided into six parts, each dealing with a separate subject under such headings as astronomy and its inseparable companion astrology, medicine, geography, the hymns to the gods, and, of course, other titles. During the ages that have passed, Hermes has come to be acknowledged as the godfather of science, particularly its chemical and medical branches. And even after the Christian era, numerous works dealing with religious and philosophical subjects were dedicated to him and to him alone. And the general term, hermetic art, has been applied to practically all the abstruse sciences of the ancient, medieval, and modern worlds. The divine Pinander, more commonly known as the Shepherd of Men, and the Smaragdine tablet found in the valley of Hebron, are the most famous of the hermetic fragments. You may reference this in a book by Manly P. Hall entitled The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. And these two works are probably authentic and contain many keys to the universal science of life as held by the mysteries, not necessarily me or anyone else, of which Hermes was a master. Nearly all hermetic thought was an elaboration of the principle of analogy contained in the great hermetic axiom, and you have heard me propound upon this before. And I quote verbatim, That which is above is like unto that which is below, and that which is below is like unto that which is above, end quote. Now at the present time, nearly all the so-called hermetic writings are said to be lost. Only a few isolated remnants remain of what once must have been a magnificent collection of philosophical, medical, and religious wisdom. During the Middle Ages, one particular branch of hermetic thought, alchemy, gradually came into prominence and for several hundred years dominated all other branches and was held under that ancient name the Rosy Cross. For those of you not familiar with the subjects covered on this broadcast, alchemy was the androgynous parent of chemistry. Notice I said androgynous. This parent of chemistry, which was separated from its sire by the speculations of Roger Bacon and Bale, while chemistry as a science dealt only with minerals, medicines, and essences, alchemy, ladies and gentlemen, struggled with the more profound elements of macrocosmic and microcosmic relationships and had absolutely nothing, nothing to do with what you have traditionally been taught. Alchemy undoubtedly originated in Egypt, for there, for there the old legends go, the secrets of transmuting base metals into gold and of prolonging the life of the physical body indefinitely were thoroughly understood by the priestcraft, but this explanation was of the exoteric and not the esoteric meaning which literally dealt with the soul and not the body, not the base metal. For it had nothing to do with metal. 
It's about elevating oneself above the animal, above the baseness of the human condition, to the purity of the consciousness of the soul, and thus a direct communication with God. 